Yesterday, um, Damien came by. Damien is the technical expert, and he talked to you about techie stuff. I'm not a techie person, as the secretary knows. It's like, I think I have a force field around me. It's like, go anywhere near technology, and it will break. I swear. So, but what I have done is I've put it in my own language, the PAE language, about what CAP really is. And I thought it might be useful for others like you that are not technology oriented to see it from, um, an, from the audience perspective, from a consumer's point of view. And so the next couple of slides are just uh, more about what CAP is, but from a public awareness perspective, because there is a quite a big difference about how you yourself might need to sell this to your constituents, to your, um, to, to the people that are in your organization. So ideally, what we're trying to do here is um, recognize that it is one message going out to many different people and many different um, um, elements. So all hazard does that all hazards. include uh, a tsunami? Yep. And that's what it's all about. It's all hazards, and it's all media. And this is sort of our 1970s version of a graphic that kind of gives you the visual of uh, of what it looks like. So you might have you have you saw yesterday the RDS the um, right machine. Looks like a radio. So it is a radio. Okay, thank you. It is a radio, but it's also an alerting mechanism. So, but for us, what's important, us being communication people, it is when they push the button here in the Office of Disaster Management or the police, whoever has the responsibility to push the button for to send that alert, once that button is pushed. It is the same message going out to multiple users. Same message to multiple users. And it doesn't matter what hazard it is because it's the choice, it's the decision of either the police or whoever is responsible for putting out that message. So I wanted to show you, can you click on this? I wanted to show you what it actually looks like. Um, you probably have already seen it, but I wanted you to kind of get a sense of um, the touching and the feeling of it. This is a US one. Um, this is the, the US uh, testing of their national emergency system. It's the very first time that it was done. And, and what they found is after 9-11, um, the, there, there was no consistency amongst the, um, the, the different providers. FEMA were, was doing one thing, and, and the county was doing another, regions were doing another. All right, just press it. In just uh, under a minute, millions of Americans will witness history for the first time ever. The government will launch a nationwide test of the emergency alert system. It's designed to allow the President of the United States to address the country within 10 minutes from any location at any time. The system was not used on 9-11, which some critics say proves the U.S. is still living with an outdated warning system. So, if you're watching television or you're listening to the radio, uh, you are about to hear it. We're told it will last just 30 seconds. Then they go into a commercial. Yeah. 
and back to regular programming. Take on the severe spending cuts. Now, each, um, each country has their own option as to, the, I guess, the type of sounds that they use in Montserrat. Do, do they use those sounds? Something similar. Something similar, right? But it's the idea that, boop -a doop -a doop -a doop, you're watching TV, and then suddenly, <laughs> it's like, whoa, what's that? And it's the same thing when you listen to the radio. So that's, but for a CAP system, whoever is designing it, they actually have to make the decision as to whether they do a broadcast interrupt or not. Uh, they make the decision whether it goes um, to cell phones, uh, to, to for SMSs. There, there's lots of um, decision points at the very beginning that they have to decide on as to what kind of cap message comes across. Uh, can you show the Elliot's uh, cap video? We're only going to show, um, I'm only going to show about maybe two minutes of this because it goes on and on and then it gets too technical and then my head kind of explodes. Um, this guy, Elliot Christian, he's from the World Meteor Meteorological Organization, WMO. And he actually worked with Billy and myself and with the UNDP on a previous project that you're going to be hearing about. And, um, and he did this because at, at the time, Common Alerting Protocol, or CAP, was not so well known. So he gives a little bit of uh, an explanation at the beginning, which is not so technical, which is good for us right now. All right, go ahead. My name is Elliot Christian, and I work for the Global Meteorological Organization. My presentation concerns CAP, the Common Alerting Protocol Standard also known as ITU X.1303. <coughs> as you know, people face all kinds of natural and man-made hazard threats. Yet no society has alerting systems that reach everyone at risk, wherever they are and whenever the event occurs. With today's amazing communications and information technologies, we can do much better. Imagine this situation for an alerting authority. You know a killer event is underway with thousands of lives at risk. But you really don't have a way to get out the alert. You don't know who is in charge of this kind of alerting in each of the affected countries. And even when you do connect, how can those authorities alert everyone at risk? Nations today still have a messy patchwork of alerting systems different approaches for each type of hazard in each kind of communications medium. And then different systems within and across communities and between nations. CAP is a key standard to make alerting work better. CAP standardizes the format of alerting messages based on the content people actually need to know so they can take action. CAP provides a message format for all kinds of hazards designed for all media. A CAP alert message can be carried over television, radio, telephone, cell phones, fax, highway signs, email, the web, even internet chat. And the CAP alert message can be targeted to a group, such as emergency responders or an individual, maybe an operator of a dam, or all people in the affected areas. Here's an example of a CAP alert message shown without its user-friendly format. The sender. Okay, let's stop it there. Us. That harmony, that CAP, is the CAP message, and that CAP message is a template. It's actually a series of about 25 templates, and the templates go anywhere from uh, it could be for a storm warning, it could be for a hurricane, it could be for a flash flood, it could be this and this and that. So the templates are already there, and what the person in, let's say, um, the Office of Disaster Management does is they just fill in the blanks, you know, the location, the time, the specifics, but everything else is standardized. And when you have many languages on an island, uh, for example, we would want to do it in French over here, then you don't have, the beauty is you don't have to worry about the, the, the translation because, oh, it's already translated, except for those little pieces that you add in. 
So that is, I, this is what CAP is all about, from my perspective. Thank you.